Welcome back to another sewing vlog. This is going to be another episode of Kim Up Cycles where I use my million fabric scraps to try and create something new, something fresh that I could possibly incorporate into my wardrobe for the new season ahead. So today the plan is to make a dress. I remember seeing this dress design on um, I remember from Itzy, I don't remember her name, I think it's Yeji and it's this like patchwork dress but the stripes are like vertical stripes and then you join them together to create a dress. Mine is going to be on the mini side but you can make yours midi or maxi, whatever you like but uh, let's just get straight into it. I have too many scraps and you guys keep asking me what do you do with your scraps? This is a project that you can consider doing for yourself, for a client. At this point please give this video a thumbs up because that way it helps the video to reach more people on YouTube. If you do enjoy it make sure to leave a comment down below and let's get into this tutorial. I tend to store my fabric scraps in these baskets. These are laundry baskets I got from Wilco and I have the two of them full and then that basket on top so I'm going to go through them to find a good combination of fabrics that I could possibly work with. The first thing I need to figure out is a good combination of fabrics in terms of weight and color and for this video I'm going to be working with woven fabrics and I wasn't sure if I wanted to do purples, pinks or reds or greens but I settled on using fabrics with a touch of red mainly because I had a lot of this red cotton drill from a previous project I had done so I was like you know what let's make that style of the show and combine fabrics that are complementary in terms of color or design. Now I'm going to go in here to just quickly sketch out my dress. It is going to be a mini dress that flares out around the hemline. It's basically fitted around the chest, around the waist, but that godet addition is going to make the dress more playful and just more fun. It is going to be straightish around the front and then scoop down the back with straps that are detachable. The measurements I'm going to be working with include my across a front chest that goes across like so. And then I would need to measure around my busts. Ensure that you either add your ease now when you're measuring yourself or when you're making your pattern just to make sure that everything fits right. Next up, I'm measuring around my waist. This is the slimmest part of my waist that I'm measuring here. And then I'm going in to measure around my hips ensuring that I have a comfortable fit around there too. After that, the other measurement I'm going to be needing to take is to measure the vertical distance from my bust to my waist, from the fullest part of my bust to the tiniest part of my waist. And then I'm going to measure the vertical distance from my waist to my hip. Most of these measurements I know of heart, so I just like note them down. But you also need to measure from your nipple to nipple measurement. That will just ensure that the seam sits really nicely on the dress. And then also decide on your dress length. Now the length is going to be from 4 inches above your bust to wherever you want it to be on your knee, below your knee or down to your ankles. From my front dress plan, I'm just starting off here by drawing a long vertical line. This is going to become my center front edge and along that line, I'm marking my desired dress length. I think my dress length was about... 38 or 28 inches it was on the shorter side and then I'm squaring across the top edge that's going to become my neckline and then I'm going to square across the bottom edge which is going to become the hemline of my dress. Now once that is done I'm going to go here and mark 4 inches below the neckline and that 4 inch point is going to become my bust line and then I'm marking the vertical distance from my bust to my waist and then from my waist to my hip. Once I have these points marked on the paper, I'm going to square them across like I did with the neckline and with the hemline. Once these lines are drawn in place, we can then go in to really mark all those horizontal measurements. So ensure you have a nice fit for yourself or for your client. 
Along the top edge, I'm marking half of my across chest measurement and then I'm going to my bust line and marking a quarter of my bust measurement plus half an inch ease. And then along my waistline, I'm going to mark a quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for the waist dart and half an inch ease in there. I'm just going straight to the hemline because it's sort of like an A-line silhouette and my hemline width is 12 inches. You want to ensure that the hip is wide enough and comfortable enough to sit on your body. So just go back in and double check before you confirm and commit to drawing the side seam like I'm doing here. So I'm just connecting all those points together along the side so I can draw in the side seam of my dress. And then I'm going to extend the side seam one inch above the bust line. And then the neckline is essentially just going to be a curved edge that goes from that one inch point onto the straight edge because it's essentially just straight across the chest. You can decide to change your shape if you want it, but that's the line I'm going to be working with for this video. Now along the bust line, I'm just marking half of my nipple to nipple measurement and then I'm going to essentially divide what is left by two. My aim is to divide the front plan into three panels. Now I'm just going in here to draw a vertical line that cuts through my half nipple to nipple measurement and then on this side I am drawing a slanted line because I want the panel to have that slanted shape. You can do yours straight if you want but mine is going to be slanted. Now I'm going to the hemline and I'm essentially just going to divide it into three points so I can connect it to the first two vertical lines that we drew on the top of this plan and once I have that drawn in place you should have three panels like this. Now I'm going to go in to shape the waistline and I'm marking a total of one inch along this way so either half an inch half an inch on both sides so you can do quarter inch quarter inch depending on how much you added onto your waist measurement. I'm also going to go to the neckline and I'm marking away half an inch on both sides of the lines that we drew and the aim is to shape the neckline back onto the waistline for the front dress plan. Hi, this is Editing Kim. I just arrived at a part of the tutorial where I had marked away the excess around the neckline and uh, like the darts along the waist and I just realized rather than have it as a slanted seam from the neckline down to the waist that should have been a seam that went to the bust point because I tried on the dress and I'm like why is it so tight around my bust why is it so tight around my bust I've just been trying to think about why and that is why I'm literally looking at the clip now and I'm, I'm this close to even just scrapping the entire project but I love the fabric combination and I love the godet detail at the bottom so I just want you guys to know that if you are following this tutorial please don't make the mistake that I have done rather have that bust seam go from the neckline out to the bust point and then back into the waistline so it shapes and sits in a comfortable way oh, I can't believe I made this mistake <laughs> Now that we have the corrections out of the way, I'm just going to go ahead to connect the dotted point back onto the hip. If I had drawn that bust point correctly, I shouldn't have had the errors I mentioned earlier on, but so keep that in mind when you're doing yours. But I'm essentially just connecting the hip point back onto the waist dotted point and we're going to be getting rid of those measurements in the middle that I've crossed out. Now I'm going to the neckline seam and I'm just ensuring that this part that curves down is the same height so when I trace off the panels and connect them together along the neckline they fit and they match. So I have extended it upwards by about half an inch on the panel to the top of the screen so when I go off to trace off that last panel and connect it to the previous one everything connects well. The godet that sits on the bottom of this dress is about 10 inches tall so it's just a little bit above the hip and here I have folded a piece of paper in half and I'm putting the folded edge against this part of the pattern and I'm just marking where I want the godet to start and I'm going to be drawing a slanted line and you can make your godet as flare as you want. I think mine ended up being a total of 10 inches when I opened it up so I just flared it out, traced off the lines, added seam allowance and then you want the hemline to curve in such a way that it may mix the shape of a half circle or a quarter circle and I'm just going in here to add a 2cm 
hem allowance so that allows me to stitch the gode onto the main dress and i cut it out and this is what it looks like it's basically just a cone that is going to add more volume to the bottom of the dress once that was done i'm going to go back into the front plan and trace off the three different panels for the dress now this middle front one is going to have a seam on the center front because i want those two front panels to be different fabrics the middle seam i have added <laughs> the middle panel correction i've added a one centimeter seam allowance around and a two centimeter hem allowance along the bottom and i've done the same for the third and final panel that sits I have added annotations, grain lines, notches. When you have a lot of panels, when you're creating patterns, notches and grain lines will be very, very important. For the back dress plan, there are two main changes that I'm going to be making. The back neckline just scoops down towards the bust line from the side seam and it's going to be lower compared to the front neckline. The second change I'm going to be making is I'm going to be shaping in the center back seam by about half an inch. This is optional. I just like adding this because it prevents a zip board from happening on the center back of the dress. Once that is done, I'm going to go in and trace off the three panels for the back like we did for the front, that middle back panel where the zip is going to be, the in-between one, and then the one on the side that would connect to the front. I've traced these off on a separate piece of pattern paper. I've added grain line, I've added annotations. These are going to come in really handy, especially if I'm going to pass this pattern onto someone else to make the garment for me. They understand what pattern is for what part of the dress. If it helps, you can also write the number of the panel. So this panel four, five or six for the back and how many pieces you need to cut as well. So these are all of the pattern pieces I ended up with for the dress. You have three for the front and three for the back. And everything is going to be cut on just one layer of fabric because I want each panel to be a different material. Since we're trying to use up the scraps, you will need to find scraps that are long enough to fit your pattern piece. So just keep that in mind when you're creating your pattern or make your patterns in such a way that you can join pieces together before you cut your dress. And I'm just going in here to use the patterns I've made to cut out the fabric. I try to play around with the fabric the color, the texture, just to ensure that I had a very cool combination at the end of the day. I am done cutting out all of the pieces for the front and for the back. When I tell you that I had to do serious, <laughs> because I wanted to combine colors that work together and shapes that kind of work together. So it still looked you know cohesive it looked good it looked tidy but it's still a patchwork dress so this is the front and then i was careful to use a fabric that was not the same as that one because this would be a side seam and the same thing for that one and that one so they were different and even though i tried to use the same prints on the front and on the back i just mix it up in an interesting way so that is what the back of the dress is looking like, the zip is going to be here and then the gradeus will be at uh, the bottom of the in-between seams except that centre back seam on the back and then the centre front seam through the middle where this Ankara and this fabric is. These are all of the gradeus I'm going to be adding to the dress. I ended up cutting 8 in total. I'm going to stitch them in on the side and that's going to add a very playful element to the bottom of the dress. This detail you can add on longer gowns, on skirts, you can even add it to the sides of trousers for the detail you want to experiment with. But I just had to use the plain red fabric because I think the main theme I want to focus on for this project is just to, the reds in all of the different scraps, just to focus on the red. So I'm going to stitch this all together. Okay, now it's time to sew everything together. I'm going to start it off with joining the godets to the bottom of the dress and I'm putting right sides together of this particular godet to this right side of this particular panel here and I'm pinning from the bottom upwards. I'm going to do it for this side and I'm going to pin it to the other side that is just next to the panel of this particular side of the dress. This is the front at this point. 
and essentially I'm going to be sewing the two sides of the triangle in first and then I'm going to sew the top up until the point so it closes off the top edge of the triangle. I've gone ahead to pin down all of the goodies for the front. I ended up with four except the center front seam. I, I didn't just want to add a goodie that I thought it would be a bit much but you can add an extra one if you want to. So I'm sewing on the one centimeter seam allowance because that's how much seam allowance I added to my pattern. After stitching on this side, I am going to ensure that I stop this stitch just a centimeter before the end of the triangle and then I'm going to flip it the other way and stitch from the top all the way down to the hemline before going to stitch up the top ends to close it off. After that, I'm going ahead to overlock the seams. If you don't have an overlocker, you could consider cutting a lining panel for this dress. Just don't cut the goodies. You just use the same pattern as to cut your lining and then you would finish up the neckline with your lining piece so that way you have a nice clean finish on the inside. So these are all of the front panels done, stitched, pressed, overlocked and it's looking really really beautiful. I did the same thing on the back leaving the center back edge open because I will need to fit my zip on that open center back edge. I already overlocked it prior to now because I don't want to think about overlocking it after adding the zip. So I'm going to be grabbing a black invisible zip because that's what I had and that's what I'm going to be using and I'm just going in here to pin the zip onto the open center back edge. I thought the zip was a bit too long but I couldn't be bothered to go to the fabric shop to get a shorter one so I'm going to be working with that one for this video. Now I'm going to be taking this to my domestic machine that has a invisible zip footer and I'm going to be sewing ever so slowly unrolling the zip as I stitch along the way. I'll basically stitch in this direction going down first and then I'll go to the other side and stitch upwards until I make it to the neckline of the dress. Once I'm done stitching the zip, I would then need to go and join the bottom of that center back edge so we ensure we have a completely closed center back zip where the bottom is stitched like I'm doing here and then the top is where the zip would be. Now that the zip is all done, I'm going to focus on now connecting the side seams of the front and back together. So I'm going to be grabbing right sides and putting them facing each other. And essentially, I just need to sew up the side seam of the front and the back together. Fitting time, this is what the dress looks like on. I am obsessed with the color and print combination. This is so cute! And the, the skirt right at the bottom of the dress with the addition of the godet just is so playful and like, oh this is pretty. This is so pretty. I think I'm going to um, just shape in the neckline a little bit. It's just gaping ever so slightly like here, very little, I'll say like half an inch. So I'll take it in here and I'll take it in there. Besides that, everything else is very beautiful. It's a comfortable fit on the body. I love the fact that it's a little bit loose around the waist. So there's good ease there. I can sit, I can eat, I can breathe in and out. So this is good, I love this. Okay, let me go and finish up the neckline, add the hooks for the straps because the straps are going to be detachable. They are these pearl straps that I got from um, Cider. I'm just going to put the, the, the little hoop for the strap and then attach the strap at the end once I'm done. So finish up the neckline, finish off the hemline and I am done. Using a black tape, I am going to be finishing off the neckline like so. You can use bias binding. You can also cut a slim piece from your scrap fabric to finish off the neckline. You could also make a facing or just cut lining panels, but I'm going to be using black tape here. Now essentially, I'm going to stitch it on this direction like this, and then I'm going to go back in and roll the tape over the neckline seam twice to conceal it. And essentially, I'm just going to stitch with a very, very narrow edge stitch, joining that side of the tape on the wrong side of the garment. 
once you're done this is what it should look like and this came out really really cool whenever i'm doing this part of the garment that i know people will see first i'm always a bit wary to ensure that it comes out really really nice you could also consider using um, a contrasting color of thread if you want to play around with the finishing on the neckline and on the hemline of the dress now the last thing i'm going to be working on is adding the shoulder straps you can add adjustable shoulder straps which i have a separate tutorial for if you don't have the kind of straps that i have here but along the neckline i am going to be adding these full pearl straps that i grabbed from another top that i had and these already have hooks attached to them so i've cut myself a pair of longer straps measuring 15 inches and shorter straps measuring 1.5 inches and i'm going to be folding and pinning the shorter strap on the front of the neckline and then the longer strap on the back of the neckline essentially i just want hoops where i can just hook my pearl straps and i'm out the door and i can even change up the straps if i find a different color of pearls or bigger pearls just to add a lot more jazz and personality to the dress so this i'm going to take to my machine and i'm just going to tack the straps down along the neckline of the dress on the front and on the back to finish it up the dress is all done it came out really really lovely i would say the only problem that i can obviously see is the fit around the bust before that reason i can't zip the dress all the way up but around the belly around the hips everything else is perfect it's just that like bust part is really really fitted the thing is if you look you won't see it too but me the way i can tell so if you make that correction on your pattern and you cut your piece the right way i think everything should fit perfectly i hope you guys enjoyed watching this project i plan to create more upsetting projects in the future so leave <clears throat> so leave any suggestions in the comment section down below if you're breaking to recreating this don't forget to tag me on social media at kinding designs give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and until my next video have a good morning afternoon and evening wherever you are bye Love, baby, love, baby. Oh.